Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for the Banner Saga. As we continue our run here on just normal difficulty right now, I suppose we could always bump it up to hard if we decide to, but I'm having fun kind of getting into the story, kind of getting back into the game. And uh, so far, so good. Um, we are at a small town on our way to, I think, Frostveller is the name of the main big town that we're going to. Um, we're with our band to the east, if you will. There's a band to the west that we started the game with. This is our band to the east that has Rook and those others. So this one's got more humans. The other one's got more Varl and things like that. Um, so we got a map, heroes, rest. Okay, let's go look at the heroes for a second because I know we got a couple heroes that can get promoted. So Ivor can get a promotion. We'll go ahead and get him promoted up. Sounds good. And I mean, he's our big defensive guy, right? I mean, this is what he's here for. So I actually think we give him a little bit more shield and a little bit more strength overall. I think that's going to be kind of good for him. And then Alette also got an upgrade. Good stuff. Um, I think giving her some more just overall damage and allowing her to use a little bit more willpower if we need to is going to be a good idea. She's actually got a lot of willpower. 6 or 12 is pretty good. Cool. I'm okay with all of that. Got the map, got the market. Okay, let's go look at the market for a second. One round gets three. Any of these that we could actually use right now? Now that I remember that that's a thing. Um, we're almost to be able to use these, but not quite yet. I think we'll hold off on all that. We're probably going to get a little bit more food here. Uh, let's go down to... Actually, let's get as much food as we can. I guess that's, that's a good idea. I think I'm okay with that. And we'll go talk to this guy. How's the arm? Eggle? Eagle? You find Eggle just outside the camp, practicing his sword swings. I saw you taking some hard hits out there. Uh, yeah, I'm um, great. They're not considering everything that's... I'm fine. My arm's fine. It's a strong shield. It's Rook, right? I know we haven't talked much before now. But if you want, just call me Gil. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, Gil. I wanted to let you know that I meant what I said before about making sure nothing happens to a let. Uh, you're protective of a let, huh? Well, she's... I don't want her to get hurt. You can see his cheeks turning bright red. Don't worry. She can take care of herself, too. I know. I didn't mean... Easy go. I don't... I know what you meant. You think about what to say. I've never seen a shield like that before. Yeah, I doubt there's many. My father made this. It's solid metal. Really heavy. But I've been practicing with it since I was a kid. I used to spend a lot of time just getting used to lifting it. He raised it up to show you. I'm pretty good with it now. It's the only thing of my father's I have left. Then when my mother died, she gave it to me before she died. Uh, Ivor seems to think you're pretty good. Did he say that? That's good. I'm trying. Never had to fight anything like Dredge before, but I thought that was his average son, but I guess it's obviously not. Uh, I don't have much else to do and how many people get to train with Varl. Just seems like I could be helped, a uh, help to someone. That's what I want to be. All right, head back to the camp. Sounds good. Oh, and if you need something, let me know. I can do anything you need. Between you and Ivor, we're going to be okay. I can tell. Makes sense. Uh, do we want to rest? We have normal morale. I think we're okay with normal. If I think we get below normal, I might consider resting. We don't have a ton of food. So I'm a little... Well... I'm going to rest a little bit. See, morale only improved to normal. I'm going to rest one more day. Okay, so we're up to good. We're going to go with that. I, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe it's a bad idea. We will find out. I guess we can go look at the map. Oh, you know, I probably could have looked at the map to see how far it is to where we're going. Where are we going? Oh, Frostbeller. It's right there. It doesn't look that far away. I mean, if Skogger was there, it looks like we're at the halfway point. So, yeah, we should have enough food, I think. How do we close out of this? So there it is. Cool. All right. Let's leave here. I assume the morale is going to drop down pretty quickly, though. You're only just outside the village when two men in red approach. My name is Hogan, says one, gest gest gesturing to the other. My brother is Mogan. Many from the village wish to join you, Frostfeller. A third man, exuding rage, charges up to the group. Shut your mouth, Hogan, he screams. That's rude. 
What's going on? Uh, these don't speak for us. They've been trying to divide the village since you got here. True. You can keep whoever you you can keep whoever wants to stay and die. The rest of us will go with the reasonable people of Skogur. I'll have I'll have you both gutted before I have I let half the village desert. Okay, that's just rude. Behind the angry villager, a mob of armed thugs have appeared, all furrowed brows and nervous stares. You both know what will happen to the rest of us if the fields are abandoned. Nobody leaves. Uh, let your people decide on their own. We thought that's how it went ourselves. A good number told me to my face they didn't want to be beaten to death by dredge. I don't know what the scam is this time, Hogan, but you got two choices. Get back to work or I'm finally putting you in the ground. Hogan, what do you say? thought it was unfair that he only asked me. <laughs> Boga draws his axe slowly, followed by Hogan. Despite their confidence, the brothers are significantly outnumbered. I think I make a poor farmer. I won't kill men for defending their homes. No, I think we'll side with the brothers. I mean, they're wanting to leave. What's wrong with that? Ivory steps forward. The thugs has state. As you pull your axe, you notice that Alette is nowhere to be seen. Uh-oh. Alette, where are you? All right, we'll bring Hogan and Mogan in here. The twins, apparently. Um... And for now, we'll add them to the end. We might change things around later. Uh, we do have this thing, which is what? 15% dodge. You know, we're going to give this to you because you're probably going to be front lines more than anybody. I assume these guys are melee, to be honest. So we'll find out here in a moment. We're attack from both sides here. Oh, we, we have very few places that we can maneuver. Um... I think I'm okay with you being there. I'm going to take the brothers. I'll put them like on the tips here. I'm going to have you kind of come off to this left hand side. The two archers can kind of get in the middle here. I think that's going to be okay. Yep, something like that. I think we'll be fine. All right. So Rook. Can move up and get an attack on this guy. Actually, you can move over and get a good attack on this guy over here. I thought he could. Oh, he'd have to move really far. He'd have to use a yellow move to get to that guy. Uh, okay, so we'll just move up a little bit, I guess. Or move over probably a little bit. And get attack on that guy. Honestly, breaking a little bit of shield on this guy. He's got a lot of shield. Might not be a bad idea. I'm actually going to move you this way. Even though I could do an attack right now, I want you to kind of fend off against these guys over here. It's actually a big shield hit. All right. You kind of also just do some shield damage here, it looks like. <laughs> nice. I was going to say, I'm assuming you're going to go for him, which he did. Uh, I guess we'll surround this guy on both sides with these guys. These guys can probably do straight up with damage attacks. Bloody flail. Service attacks. Strikes each randomly attack strength or armor. One strength or break each, plus one per adjacent ally on last hit. I mean, this would do four total damage, four total kind of overall damage. Actually, I think we do that with him, and this guy can just do a straight up attack. That might actually work out okay. I did some pretty good damage there. Yeah, with the willpower, you should be able to kill this guy. You also have the bloody flail, but I don't think we're going to need that. Just do one willpower here, and you're good to go. Alright, 
Ähm Uh, if we mark you, right? The mark is only adjacent, so we would have to move next to you, right? I mean, the best move would be to move up and have everybody adjacent, but we're not going to have that. I think we can at least move you up to... Honestly, I don't know if there's any penalty of moving you behind him. And I think we will try to mark the prey and see what this does with this guy attacking as well. Did a little bit of damage. I don't know. Might, might have been a good one. Or it's hard to tell. All right, so he's still resisting. That's awesome. Um, I think these this group can handle this guy coming over. So we're gonna have you just stay on this guy. Honestly, we don't need to do any more than just the one right now. I don't think. All right, let's get rid of this guy first. I think, well, I think they're even, so I think we're just going to do a damaging attack here. Right, so you're actually coming after her. Get some good shield damage to her, to be fair. All right, so we're really not going to be doing that much damage here with you, no matter what we do. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to turn to you. We're going to do shield damage to you. Set up for a future attack. Oh, that's doing a little more damage to her than I would like. For sure. Um, I'll go ahead and move you here. I think we do another bloody flail on you, actually. Ouch, no. Leave her alone, that's rude. We just gotta finish this guy off at this point. I don't think it really matters what order we do this in. All right, definitely use a willpower to move you up here. And we use a willpower to finish this guy off. Ouch. All right, I gotta play that a little bit better, but we'll be all right. I think they're just injured though, so I think we're okay. Yep, Sindred. Definitely could have done better, but not too bad. The brothers thank you with wide grins. Soon, many of the villagers have joined your caravan. You scan around anxiously for Alette, who had gone missing when fighting began. Eventually, you find her watching from afar. Hogan returns at the moment, introducing you to his son and wife, and you soon set out again. All right, what was the one I wanted to let? That's a lot of extra clansmen. Alette marches quietly alongside the caravan, a little distance since leaving the village. When you stop for a rest, Oddleaf approaches you both. Alette, I have something for you. She's going to give her a bow or something, right? I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> Oddleaf has gathered up the long banner. Oh, okay, from the caravan. It smells warmly as she passes it to Alette. What is this about? I was hoping you'd sew up the banner with everything that has happened since we left Skogger. Or Skogger. Come find me another time, Rook, and we'll talk. Before you can comment, she dis she departs. Dad, are you the chieftain now? Uh, I'll just say I don't know. Oh, then that means you're both quiet for a moment while Unle unfurls the banner. Oddleaf has been teaching me how to sew. She speaks pretty highly of you. Can we read the part about Mom? 
you nod. On the banner has been sown the story of the families who have lived in Skoger throughout the years. Skoger, Skoger. Just as is done on every banner in every town. I wish she were here, but I'm kind of glad she isn't. The section of banner about your family is short, but Aletta has been sewing in colorful designs. Why do you say that? So she doesn't have to deal with all of this. Dredge, leaving home, and... Why did you have to kill those men in the village? I mean, if it's okay to ask. I'm worried about why you disappeared. I had to make a hard choice. I would say they had to kill others. But how do you know which ones are bad? Because the dredge are terrifying. Every time we have to fight them, I just want to run. But I don't want to kill a person, please. Are you mad at me? I'll say I'm glad you don't want to. Let smiles at this, then her face sinks again. I guess I would do it if I really had to. But do we have to? I know what you mean. Yeah, I know, Dad. I think you're doing a good job. She hugs you. You spend the rest of your time together sewing new verses into the banner. For better or worse, the story of your skoger is your burden now. All right, so we want to talk to her for sure. We got training, rest, heroes. Okay, did we get we got some promotions, right? Yeah, we did. One or more of your units is injured. Injured units can still fight, but have a penalty to max strength equal to the number of days wounded. They heal as time passes when resting in camp. So we do have a couple injuries. Okay. And we have just the one promotion, actually, it looks like. Okay. Let's get you promoted up. Both you and your brother are the same, right? You both have the bloody flail. Yep. Shield wall. By standing next to an ally, the character creates a shield wall, raising the armor of both himself and his ally by one. Gotta keep that in mind. This bonus remains until the raider is no longer adjacent to the ally. When multiple raiders stand next to each other, this effect is magnified as they gain each other their own bonus. Four raiders standing in a square formation will each gain additional four arm. Okay, yeah. So we want to keep him and his brother very close together. I think he's the only one that has the shield wall, right? So you have puncture... By standing still, the archer is able to line up a shot that takes advantage of an enemy's missing armor doing bonus damage. For every two points of armor her target has lost, the archer gains one additional strength to her attack, as long as she didn't move beforehand. This makes her especially deadly near the end of fight or against tough opponents who have lost a lot of armor. Just remember not to move, giving the archer time to line up her shot. That's what we saw before. I think uh, Rook does not have that. He has the light step. The character uses a superior dexterity to move around bodies, allowing him to pass through but not stop on any allies. Okay, I noticed that. He was able to pass through some allies. Okay. Light step can have, have, help a crafty character get safely into position behind armored allies before going in for the strike or escape from a dangerous position. All right. That's cool. Um, when set up smartly, mark prey can be one of the most powerful tactics available to the party and the difference between victory and an impossible battle. Any allies in range of the victim get a free instant attack on the mark target. Uh, you have stone wall and shield wall. So you also have shield wall. Cool. And then you have return the favor, which we've seen on one of the other guys before. You have shield wall. So we've got three guys with shield wall. If we keep them together, they're just going to be uh, just they're just going to be a front line for us that will be fairly impenetrable. That's really good. And then where you saw yours? Oh, there, there's there's let. Now let has also puncture, right? Yep. Yeah. So a let and um, what's her name? Oddleaf. Both have puncture. Okay, we'll get you promoted up. Uh, I guess we'll go back to your actual abilities. Um, what do we want you to have? I mean, the whole shield wall thing is really good for you. So I think I'm actually going to give you a little bit of shield and a little bit of damage. Did somebody else have a promotion? I can't remember suddenly. No. And we have more... Oh, that's why I wasn't seeing her. We have more, we have more people than we have spots up here. I mean, I do want to do want to kind of rest to get you back. So I think what we do is we bring you out, pop you in in case we need you for something. Um, I think we potentially actually move you guys to the front so we can set up our wall. Uh, do I want to do this to set the archers last? Maybe. Maybe this is okay. Kind of like Hogan better than uh, than Gil here, to be honest, but I do like the three archers as well. We'll go with this for now. I don't want to do any training right now. We'll go talk to her in a minute. Uh, we'll probably rest a day as well once we get finished done talking to her. How are you doing, Odd? 
Apparently that's what we call her. Odd. I'm all right. Not at first. Sometimes when a loved one dies, people say it doesn't sink in for a while. It sunk in for me right away. People telling me I'm a strong woman. It's funny. My father named me Oddleaf before I was even born. He wanted a boy so badly. Strong woman. What does that even mean? Um, I'll just say people look up to you. Don't take this the wrong way, but I don't want to be known for handling my feelings. Fair enough. If I feel nothing about my husband dying. People think I'm strong. If I cry because my insides feel like they're on fire, I'm weak. Why does that feel so backwards? I'm sorry, Rook. It's been hard. You're not sure what to say. In the many years you've known the chieftain's wife, this is probably the most you've ever talked. You asked me to come find you. Yes, it's about the banner. I thought about it a long time. He asked me to give it to you, you know, if something happened. Why me? He always depended on you, Rook. It should be mine. I should, I could carry it. But I thought about why he named you. I get it. They won't follow a woman. Okay. Families would leave. Our banner would be divided. No, I would vouch for you. Come on, Rook. This isn't the time for pretend. What? I would. It's not just about our small town. What happens the first time we meet, we need something from another clan? How will that go? And the first time someone thinks they can take advantage of us. I think this is what has to happen. Maybe this is what it means to be a strong one? Sure. I'm not sure if that's the dumbest thing I've heard or the sweetest. Listen, I know I dragged this out. The truth is, my husband and I could never have a child. I don't want our banner to end here. It'll be safe with you and Alette. I know you're going to take care of her. She puts her hand on her shoulder as she heads back to the camp. Fair enough. Okay. All right, we're going to rest one day just to make sure we have her fully back. And then we are going to, I guess, leave. The other guy is still injured. That's okay. We've got enough people in our party right now. At a small split in the trail, a few fighters stop to speak with you, each carrying a single pack. We recognize this place, one man says. Spent several years here with some kin. If they're still around. We have to warn them of what's coming. With luck, we'll find you again in less than a week. Um... We could send them with extra supplies. I'm worried that if we did that, though, we would have not have enough. It's a gamble, but I feel like it's a gamble that's worth it. If that's all you're taking, you may never make it. You say, grabbing a few items from the supply wagon, you strap the additional provisions to their backs. Search for family instead of food, you say with a smile. The men class risk with you before departing. Maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe it's not. Oh, we only lost a few supplies. That's not bad. And there, there's the city. We're good. Complaints of Raffin's farters, excessive drinking have resurfaced. This time the man stumbled over some tent rubs, pulled the snag canvas through a campfire, nearly setting a supply wagon aflame. Clansmen put out the fire on both the wagon and Rasper's leg before leading him to you. I guess we'll let him... I'm not going to punish him physically. Ban him from camping near the others in the future. We'll just say nothing but water from now on. He groggily agrees, slurring his way through promises to quit being such a nuisance. Many of the onlookers snort or roll their eyes, but go back to their business. Somehow you'll doubt it'll be long before he manages to find another drink, whether you allow it or not. Dredge, shouts a man from the back of the caravan. It's Raffin's Varder, the un unabashed drunk, staggering towards you, looking not entirely sober. He screams up again, pointing to the trees in the distance. Fear races through the caravan as fighters pull their weapons. Scouts return with no sightings. The furious men surround Raffin's Varder. We'll ready ourselves against Dredge just in case. There'll be time for that later, you tell the man. For now, we take no chances. A full day of uneasy rest passes with no sign of Dredge. The caravan is annoyed by the scare and the delay. Eventually, he bursts into laughter, and you're sure they're never worrying a dredge. Not long after, he, go he goes missing. Nobody searches for him or seems to mind. Uh-oh. Minus one clansman. Once a strong, thriving city, the walls of Frostbetter now just keep the howling winds at bay. With luck, they'll hold out against dredge as well. You jostle through fallow crowds of sunken faces who appear as though they've been freezing in front of Frostbeller for days. The gates are closed. You come to a stop at the bottom of the hill. This is not looking good, says Rook. 
Why are there so many people in the fields? We can't stay outside in the open like this. Odd finds you amongst the many refugees. Look, I just talked to some of the women here. Nobody's being let into the city. Why? It's overrun with Varl from Blotzbalker and Greyhorn. People from Bitra, all the nearby villages. The dredge are everywhere. And the chieftain of Frostfailer has locked himself in his great hall. That's when they close the gates. When the dredge come, the hills will turn red. We have to get in there. Um... I want to know more about what's going on in there. I see a lot of people gathered around the rest houses and the gates. We could find out what they know. How do we get in anyway? They close the gates. I can get the gate open, says Ivor. Let's see if there's another way before we start breaking down gates. I wasn't going to break it. Just push really hard. I like that. All right, we can rest. We do still have an injury, I assume. Uh, we can go look at our heroes just to confirm that. Yeah, just one injury left. But I think with just one injury, I think we'll be okay. Uh, we got the market. We got the gate. Let's go look at the market for a second. I mean, we're not far out from the Obsidian Ring. Or the Turquoise Band. I mean, we could obviously use this one now. Army kind of feels like grabbing this two obsidian ring and the turquoise band just to have a couple more items for some more people. And maybe it's dumb to be buying all these items, but I don't know. It feels like it might not be a bad idea. We can definitely get a bunch of supplies. Guess we'll grab as much as we can. And we'll go to the gate. Actually, nope. We're going to go ahead and put a cut in there. When we come back, we will figure out what's going on with Frost Veiler and go from there. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.